Last month, I tried using the Xbox as a dedicated gaming computer for a week, but after seeing its shortcomings, I decided to take matters into my own hands. Can we build a PC that has the same benefits as an Xbox Series S and is under $200? The Series S has two major benefits, form factor and energy consumption. It's small and portable, and it only consumes like 80 watts, according to Microsoft's own tests. So in order for us to get even close to the form factor and the efficiency of the Series S, we have to buy a modern office computer and iterate from there. So I bought the Lenovo ThinkCenter M720S. For $84 before tax, it came with a six core i5-8400, eight gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, and a 210 watt power supply. Now compared to the Series S spec for spec, it falls about a tier behind in almost every single aspect, but it does make up for it in other aspects. For one, it is upgradable. We can get an eight core i7-9700, 16 gigs of RAM, and a larger SSD in the future. It also has great IO options. So what we lose in hardware prowess, we gain in versatility. I installed Windows 11 on the system and everything worked without a hitch. So excluding tax, we have about $116 left in our budget. We're gonna allocate that to the video card. Because we're using a smaller desktop, we're limited to low profile video cards. Because we have a low wattage power supply, we're limited to low wattage video cards. The best that we can do without any behind the dumpster shady deals is the ARC A380 six gigabyte. I know. Now, hear me out. The A380 is the best candidate for the job. It has six gigs of VRAM, it performs closely to an RX 470, and there's a low profile model for about $103.50. The alternatives had deal breakers that we couldn't really remedy. So we need to make do with what we have. I installed the A380 into the Think Center and everything booted up just fine, and the A380 performed as expected in 3D Mark Time Spy. But when I tried to run Cyberpunk, it was pretty abysmal, even at low settings. And to add insult to injury, the video card, it actually doesn't fit in the case. So things aren't looking too great, and we only have like $8 left in the budget to make this project work. We have a few issues. Performance isn't great. We also need to cut off a chunk right here. Um, yeah, we need to dremel, dremel that out. Now, before we talk about how I solve those issues, I wanna talk about something that is really important to me and is hopefully an encouragement to you guys, and that's just physical health. I had really bad back pain for about six months to the point where even sneezing actually hurt me so much. And to be completely honest with you guys, it was because I wasn't taking care of my body. And it's really easy to get stuck in that cycle, especially when you work at a computer all day. I decided to give Train Well a shot back in July and it has been completely life-changing. And I don't mean that in an exaggeration. Train Well is a personalized exercise and personal trainer platform where they match you with a certified and experienced trainer. The trainer then curates a workout regimen and diet plan for you that works with your schedule. I had an onboarding call with my trainer Dante at the very start. I told him I wanted a calisthenics based workout three times a week and he curated a routine that was available literally the very next day. And these are strength training exercises that have built my body physically and given me confidence. Train well has been the best way to do strength training and it's obviously not just for bodybuilders but also for regular computer people like me and like you. Minus missing maybe two or three workouts, I've been consistent since July and I've seen a noticeable improvement. My back pain is gone, I feel healthier, I'm eating better, I have more energy. Overall, just way better. And I don't ever have to think about what I'm gonna be working out or how I'm going to do it because Dante has that workout plan for me. Up first is six reps of inchworm. Press end when you're done. And if I have any questions, I can just talk to him. He's been super communicative, super encouraging, and challenging in all the right ways. If you need to get back into movement again, especially if you work at a desk all day, then I highly recommend Train Well. I've been a customer for almost three months and I don't plan on stopping. The first 100 people to sign up with my train well link will get 14 days free and $25 off their first month. So click the link in the description or scan the QR code 
on screen. Thank you so much Trainwell for sponsoring this video and actually making my back pain go away so I can build computers like the one that I'm going to build right now. So let's get, let's get back into that. Let's start with the low hanging fruit first, the video card. We'll need to Dremel a portion of the case to get it to fit. And thankfully, I know the exact person for the job. This right here is Dr. Anderson, my research advisor and overall just a cool guy. He has his own woodworking shop and he offered to do the job for me. I asked him to just cut a piece of the case with a Dremel and he pulled out a whole angle grinder. That's just the kind of guy he is. Nice. So thank you, Dr. Anderson. I so appreciate it. Let's see if the computer turns on. Power's on. Yes. All right, so issue number one, fixed. Now for the harder part, why is gaming performance just so Ooh. bad? Well, part of the reason is the CPU and only having eight gigs of RAM. But the real problem is we're missing a crucial technology. Resizable bar. Resizable bar allows your processor to access your entire GPU memory at once instead of in smaller chunks. Because you can grab more data per access, your gaming performance can improve dramatically. And Intel GPUs literally need this to function properly. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a simple way to enable resizable bar on my Think Center right here. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. As a matter of fact, most motherboards and processors actually support resizable bar. You just need to force the feature by flashing a modified BIOS onto the computer. Thankfully, there's a whole tutorial on GitHub called Rebar UEFI. It's pretty involved, but I followed that and I was able to create a modified BIOS for the Think Center. I tried flashing it, but uh, Lenovo had other ideas. I tried flashing the BIOS through Lenovo's own software utility. I tried flashing it through command prompt. I tried through a shell script, a bootable USB, and I even tried to put the Think Center into service mode by shorting one of the pins on the motherboard. But every time I was foiled with a very silly error message. So this should be really easy, but Lenovo, HP, Dell, and basically every other OEM manufacturer has put guards on BIOS flashing. Typically, you would update your BIOS through software, but these manufacturers have added checksums that prevent flashing any kind of modified BIOS file. But thankfully, there is a solution, and it comes in a three inch USB format. This is the CH341A, and it's a handy tool that allows us to update the BIOS physically by writing to the BIOS chip itself. Essentially, we just clip this to the chip, we flash the BIOS onto the chip, and we're done. Theoretically, of course, right? Let's find out if it actually works. After watching multiple tutorials to get started, I clipped the programmer directly onto the BIOS chip, and I backed up the current BIOS, which is extremely important. Don't forget to do that if you're going to do this. And then I flashed the modified BIOS onto the computer. Let's see if I brick the computer. Oh no. I bricked it. Yeah, it just, it wasn't turning on. Thankfully, I had the backup BIOS and I was able to get the computer to a working state. But why did the modified BIOS flop? Well, the modified BIOS file that I had came directly from Lenovo's website. And that's perfectly fine for software flashing, but it's missing about four megabytes of data necessary for flashing it directly onto the hardware, the BIOS chip itself. So what I actually need to do is I need to modify the backup BIOS file that I dumped and flash that and hopefully that should work. We're gonna find out. So I went through the rebar UEFI steps yet again, but this time with the dumped BIOS on the chip instead of the BIOS that I got from Lenovo's website. Should I push the button? <gasps> yeah, we did it, Joe. We did it. And from there, it was smooth sailing. I enabled 4G decoding, I disabled CSM, and I was able to set up rebar using the software included in the tutorial. And it actually worked. Intel's control center saw that rebar was enabled. And just to prove that there was a performance difference, I tested Cyberpunk 2077 with the same settings as before and it was noticeably better. The performance at high settings using rebar is the same performance as using medium settings without rebar. So it's, it's about a tier in graphic settings faster. We finally did it. We got the computer set up 
to finally battle the Xbox Series S. It was about $89 for the base computer, $103.49 for the video card, and then about $14 for the BIOS programmer. But you can get that for like $5 on AliExpress. So the total for the whole system uh, is about $197.49 before taxes. And I'm pretty happy with what we're getting out of it. Now this has been a long journey, so I'm going to actually compare this computer to my Series S in a future video. So stay subscribed if you wanna check that out. And let me know what you think is gonna happen. In what ways do you think my computer is going to win, the one that we just built? In what ways do you think the Xbox is going to pull ahead and be a better choice? Shout out again to Trainwell for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description or the QR code to start your health journey again. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next update. Peace.